With us now is Ron Epstein. He's a research analyst at Bank of America Securities. It covers the space area. Um, how significant was today's launch for you, Ron? What does it tell you? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's a significant factor. Um, and like Michael said, I think any way you measure it, um, it largely was a success. And the scale and scope of this thing, you can't underappreciate. Being two times the size of uh, the Saturn V, it's just a massive machine. And getting it off the ground and what they got out of it and the learning uh, for the industry is fantastic. And you know, I, I would imagine here in, not, in the not too distant future, they'll get more success. And it's just space is hard. You hear that cliche again and again. And this is just more evidence of it. Why do you need a rocket that big? What can it do that other rockets can't do? Yeah, so by having that much volume, you can bring the cost to get things into orbit down. So one of the humongous victories SpaceX has really had is they've been on the frontier really of reducing the cost to get a kilogram in orbit. And this, you know, the size and scale and scope of this it allows you to do that. Uh, and then they have a broader mission where they actually want to go to Mars with this thing and, and refuel it in space. But, you know, that reducing the cost to get a kilogram into orbit has you know, birthed an entire commercial space industry and has allowed a whole new concepts in terms of satellite technology, Earth imagery and other things to, to take place. Right. So this is all part and parcel with the revolution we're seeing in the space economy. Although you think we need a lot of consolidation now. And what, what are the takeaways from Virgin Orbit's debacle? Yeah, so if you look at kind of what happened at Virgin Orbit and what's going on more broadly in, in the space space, uh, we will probably see some consolidation. And some of that has to do with things like companies running out of financing like, like Virgin Orbit did. And you, it's a space that has had a lot of startups in it. And those startups, some will make it, some won't. And some of that technology and talent is going to get absorbed by, by other companies. Is it, uh, an, so, is it an investable space? And if yeah, so, I, where where are the best investments? Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely investable. Um, the companies that we like the most right now, if you look at uh, Rocket Lab, um, that's a huge one. Rocket Lab is uh, one of, of two uh, you know, companies that's been very successful in launch. It's really the only launch company that's publicly traded. Uh, that's one place you can go. And then if you look at some of the big primes, Northrop Grumman has one of the big, big growth drivers for them has been their space business. If you look at their space business, it's grown in the mid-teens over the last couple of years, and that's been a big driver for them. So you can look at some of the big traditional players, but you can look at some of the very, very innovative smaller players. Ron, thank you so much. Very insightful. We appreciate your time today.